So in this video, I'm going to explain how people make a karyotype and what it is used for. So to begin with, let's get some background knowledge about what exactly a karyotype is. And so as you can see in this picture right here, this is a karyotype of a normal male. And you know it's male because you see there's an X and then the Y chromosome there. And so pretty much the karyotype is a picture of all of the chromosomes in a single cell. So now you may ask, why is this important? Well, it's important in order to determine certain abnormalities that may exist. So there can be a wide variety of genetic diseases, such as Turner's and Klinefelter syndrome. And so there are also a couple more, but essentially these are um, genetic disorders in which you have an abnormal amount of chromosomes. And so, for example, what I mentioned, Turner syndrome is caused by an absence of one of the X chromosomes in a female. Additionally, in the case of Klinefelter syndrome, that's when a male, so we have a male here with an XY. So if this male had another X chromosome, he would be diagnosed with Klinefelter syndrome. And so as you can see, I've pretty much my two examples are just about the sex chromosomes, but these um, chromosome abnormalities can also occur on autosomes. So remember the autosomes are chromosomes one to 22. So all of these over here. And so, an example of that would be Down syndrome, where you have three copies of the chromosome 21. And so to sum it up, essentially, the karyotype will allow you to know a lot about the genetic information of an individual. And so with this information, you can determine if there are going to be any genetic disorders, and you can also determine the sex of the individual. So now you might be curious as to how this is done. And so it's important to remember that usually chromosomes exist in chromatin form. So they're kind of, they look like just essentially spaghetti in a, in the nucleus. And so you might wonder how can they get it in a condensed form like this and take a picture of it. So what happens is they will halt the cell at metaphase. And remember, during metaphase, all of the chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate and they're already condensed from prophase. So they're already gonna look like this. So the actual process is pretty complicated, but essentially you have to get the cell to stop during metaphase. And so you can do this by adding chemicals. And so you probably won't have to know this, but essentially what happens is the chemical that is added prevents the spindles from binding to the centromeres. So essentially the cell is stopped at metaphase. And then once the stop cell is stopped at metaphase, you can take nice pictures of all of these chromosomes. And then after that, you can stain the chromosomes with a Giesma stain that will give it the banding pattern. So you see here, some parts are darker and some parts are lighter. And then one last thing I wanna mention is that as you can kind of see, the chromosomes decrease in size as you get larger in number. So chromosome number one is the biggest and then 22 is the smallest. And so chromosomes are numbered based on their size. So that pretty much sums it up for this video about karyotypes. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.